Hey guys, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you how you can make RPG dialogue in Scratch. Or basically, how you could make a game with branching conversations, where a character doesn't just say one thing every time you click on them, but rather, they'll respond to what the player says and say different things depending on what's happened in the game. I'll show you it all with an example project, but of course, you can put in your own characters and your own dialogue and change things around. So yeah, let's get started. So for the base of this game, I'm gonna start with the virtual town that I made in a previous video. Uh, so if you'd like to see how I put together this code and what it all does, you can check that video out. But basically, uh, you have a main character that you can move around with the arrow keys. Uh, you can click these buttons to move between locations. And then you've got this character who, when you click on them, will say something and only appears at this location. So rather than just having Gobo say hello every time you click on him, let's have Gobo actually respond to what you, the player, say. So the best way to do that in Scratch is in the sensing category, there's this block that says ask, and there's also this block under it that says answer. And if you drag out the ask block and click on it to test it out, you'll see it makes the character ask the question that's in here, and then it pops up a box for the player to type in their answer. So if I type in Zinnia, and then hit return, or I could also have clicked that check mark. Then, if you drag out this round answer block, you'll see that it is set to whatever I said as my name. So if you want the character to ask a question in your project, you can just attach the ask block and put in whatever question you want the character to ask. I am gonna have Gobo say, do you like fish? And so now we can try. Gobo will first say, hello, and then do you like fish? And then we can answer. And right now, uh, Gobo isn't doing anything with that answer. And to make him be able to sort of respond actually to what the player says, you can go to the control category and then drag out an if then block. And we'll have Gobo do one thing if the player says yes, and another thing if they say no. So uh, to do that, you can go to the operators category and get an equals block. And then if you remember that round answer block that sort of holds the answer that the player said, we can put that in there and then you can have Gobo say something specific if the player's answer is yes. So I'm gonna have Gobo try and sell the player a barrel of fish. Oh, and I wrote so much, I need to move this code down. And then if the player doesn't say yes, I'll have Gobo say something else like he's sad that he can't sell them the fish. So let's try it out. If I click on Gobo, he says, do you like fish? If I say yes, he will try to sell fish to me. And if I, say no, or really anything else would go into this category. He says he'll sell fish somewhere else. Also, I realized I used a say block without a number on it, which will just make the character say this until you make them say something else. So I'm actually gonna switch this. I'm gonna copy that and delete that and paste that in here, uh, because now that will only be for two seconds. So let me try that again. So I'll say no and there we go. Now he'll only say it for two seconds. So now we have it so that Gobo asks you a question and will say something different based on your answer. But if you'll notice, every time you click on Gobo, he asks you the same question over and over again. Now, let's say you wanted to make it so that the first time you meet Gobo, he asks you this, and then the second time he says something different. You can do that by creating a variable. And if you haven't used variables before, a variable in Scratch just keeps track of a certain number in your project. So we can make a variable to keep track of the number of times we talked to Gobo. So I'll click on that and we can call it times talked to Gobo and click okay. And so now we've got this variable. And after we click on Gobo and talk to him, we can change times talked to Gobo by one. So let's test that out click on Gobo, have our lovely little conversation. And as you can see, times talk to Gobo is now at one. So it went up. And now to make Gobo only say this when we've talked to him zero times, we can get another if block. Well, I'll get an if else block so we can have multiple options, but we can put this in the top part and say, if I'll get an equals block and put it in there if times talk to Gobo equals zero, then have this conversation. Otherwise, well, let's just put something else there. Like we can put in hello again, 
because now Gobo has met the player already. So let's try that out. Click on Gobo, and as you can see, we've already talked to Gobo once, so he said hello again because time to talk to Gobo is not zero. Now, here's one problem. If I click on the green flag, time to talk to Gobo is still one. So he'll say hello again, even though in this playthrough, I clicked the green flag, so it actually should have started over. So we can fix that by saying, when the green flag is clicked, set times talk to Gobo to zero. So let's try it out. There we go. Now it starts back at zero when I click the green flag. And if I click on Gobo, he says, hello. And we get all this with the fish. Now, let me show you one last thing. What if you wanted on this other time you talk to Gobo for him to remember what your answer was from this past part? You could do that by storing the answer in a variable. So let me show you how to do that. I'll, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and delete my variable because it's just clogging up the list. Okay, gone. Click make a variable and I'm gonna make one called fish answer. Beautiful. And now right after the player answers this question, do you like fish? We can set fish answer to whatever the answer block is. And now we have their answer saved. And so we can use it later in the project. So down here, we can get another if else block. And we could say here, I'm going to get rid of this. We can say if the player's fish answer is yes, if they are a fish enjoyer, then we can have Gobo say something that references that. And if they answered something else, we can have Gobo say something based on that. And so then if we put this in here, well, now let's try it out. So start the game, I will say that I do like fish. Yay, great. And then if I talk to Gobo again, he remembers that. And let's restart. If I say no, then uh, he is suspicious of me. So there you go. I hope you have fun making your project. And if you have any ideas of things that could be added to this, let me know in the comments. I could always make a part two. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Scratch on.